everybody good morning everybody back in fsx again uh in the pmgg 737 ngx uh we'll be doing a flight today uh from kansas city to st louis uh should be a 41 minute trip total uh we're gonna do some pre-flight stuff on the airplane here in a second uh let's just go through the overheads and uh just check everything out first uh irs is good to go Let's check our LED flaps. Lights are good. LED devices. Uh, flight controls. Yaw damper. I'm leave. I want to check that light, but that light's going to be off. I forgot. Um, IRS is all good. We don't need to mess with those. Uh, we just want to check our cross feed. Make sure that light works. And it does. As well as uh, cycle some fuel pump lights. These are good. And then we work our way up. So, APU Gen is on bus. Power is, uh, ground power is off. Standby power is on auto. Uh, this drive should be off like that. We can check our APU generator is good. We've got 66 amps, 28 volts, 115 AC volts actually. Uh, and we can change that and, and, and look at what we got. We have no Gen 2, no Gen 1. Obviously, those are the generators from the engines. IRSs are good. Service center phone, we can come down the line. We don't need those lights on. That's a let everybody know that uh, we're getting ready to be on our way. Uh, we'll set the ignition to both on those engines. Run out here, out through corn cutout. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, let me test this, which is, uh, I don't think we really have. This light looks good. Uh, we just want to check the hydraulic lights. And those are both good, and they will both go out like so. Engine the anti ice, just making sure the lights work, and they do. Uh, as you probe heat, lights are good. The window heat, and then we work our way up here. We'll check the passenger oxygen light, and it works. It's all good, and as we move on, we'll check the mock airspeed testers and the tall stall warning test as well. There we go, left and right. Looks working, working, and we flow on down. This is all good. Auto, auto. Uh, packs are on right now, providing air conditioning from the APU bleed. No engine bleeds right now. We can turn these on, make sure the dual bleed light comes on, which it does, but. We'll just use the APU as of right now. Flight level is going to be 290. Oh, 290. Uh, and we'll check the altitude minute when we get into the first officer position. But uh, everything seems to check out good there. Uh, we can go ahead over here to the first officer. His side. And uh, we'll check everything. Landing altitude today is going to be 650 in Lambert. Uh, everything else looks good to go there. Uh, we can pre-flight the airplane. After caution light has been reset. We'll put this sucker away and we'll get started here on the good stuff. The fun stuff that we all love. First thing is first. Uh, let's go to the menu, FS actions, fuel. And, uh, fuel we're going to take on, uh, 24,500. 24,500 pounds a day. That'll give us a nice perfect to load what I've used in this trip before so I know it uh, so yeah we'll use that return take a look at our payload today we are going to set random we just want to have see what we get oh wow we got a full flight instead of a uh, light flight I usually have a light flight but we got a full flight uh, pretty uh, not a full flight but you know a, a fairly heavy one so and some good uh, amount of cargo as well ground connections I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Wheel chocks, they are removed since we we're getting ready to go. Um, and normally you would do this while the airplane is being boarded. So, here we are at the initial reference page. Um, reference airport, MCI, KMCI, which is the Kilo Mike Charlie India for Kansas City. There's our GPS coordinates. The gate, not worried about it. We're at gate 40 today, but I don't think it's gonna find it really don't no I'm not gonna find it maybe B40 I'm probably wasting my time here oh, 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 oh. 
Fail, 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 fail. Uh, Bravo four zero. Not in the database. Not in the database. Fuck it. It's all right. Um, continue on to our index. Not our index, duh. Our route page. Uh, we are going to be MCI. Destination today, St. Louis. We got company route. Flight number is going to be 961. Not a big deal. Uh, no company route. MCI, let's find out what runway we're using on that, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Well, actually, no, let's go ahead and do it now. And by the way, I am not a, um, okay. I don't know the avionics aren't coming on. All right. So we're going to be departing runway one niner and we can put that away. So one niner is going to be the runway, uh, and we will be taking off on probably one nine right. Yes. One niner right. That will be the runway used today. Okay. So we got that. Uh, back to here. Let's get our zero fuel weight. We'll have the airplane calculated for us. 114,000.9. Uh, looks good. F reserves. We've got 45 minutes of reserves, which we're going to be burning the reserves the whole time there. Just because uh, 89 on the cost index. Uh, reserves is just how many minutes extra fuel we have on board. So we can make an alternate and we'll be fine for that if we have to. Uh, cost index is what the airline gives us a number, and that basically tells the computer how to fly the airplane to conserve fuel uh, and, you know, to make it. Uh, and and by the way, I'm not a 737 pilot. I'm a private pilot. I fly Cessna 172, um, but I'm, um, I'm just having fun here in the simulator, so it's going to be kind of relaxed, but I'm going to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. Cruise winds, not could get to it. Not really sure. Okay, execute. And one limit. I'm not gonna do it to rate of takeoff. We're pretty heavy. Uh, go to the takeoff. Flaps are gonna be five. Those are the little wing flaps that come down. They help us uh, provide lift. Uh, drag and lift as well, but uh, lift on what we need to use it for. Uh, CG is gonna give us the center of gravity, which is 22.4. 5.89 on the trim wheel. Here's our trim wheel. And let's roll it back to 5.89. Oh, no, back a little bit. Uh, about right there looks good. All right, 5.89. And let's calculate our V speeds, but not yet. Let's uh, check the next page. Runway wind is going to be 171 at 10 knots. 171 slash 0 1 0. We'll tell the airplane that. They'll probably like to know that. We'll be a uh, dry surface. So back to the previous page. We can calculate our V speeds. So we have 126 of V1, 132 for VR, V2, 139. Uh, V1 is going to be the final decision speed to take the airplane to the air. So 126 knots. In the vicinities of 130 miles per hour. So let's do our route now. Departures and arrivals. Departure out of St. Louis. We're going to be doing the good old Lake 7. Uh, it would be the Lakes 8 today. This is a little out of date, but that's all right. Lake 7, COU transition. We're going to be taking off runway 1 minor right. So takeoff speed's been deleted. Okay, we'll worry about that in a minute. Let's let's just finish this out first. It's a little more more uh, a little better. Let's see here. Oh, departure and arrival. Arrival into St. Louis today is going to be the good old Kayla one, and I believe there is a runway one two. So in St. Louis, we'll be doing ILS runway one two right. We're going to set up for that. Not sure if that's what they're going to give us. Actually, they're probably going to give us more runway one two left. So let's see here. Let's do one two left just in case. Via the Kayla one as well. So yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Departure selected, selected. Let's go to the route page and activate the route. 
So now we have a blue line can show us the route and we want to check it before we go anywhere. So let's check our route. Go to plan mode. Uh, we will zoom in a little bit more than that and we can step through it. So let's go through the legs and step through. We got MCI here. I already know that we're going to have a route and discontinuity here. So let's go to the next page. Let's bring Kayla intersection in the scratch pad and we'll throw it up in here, which is going to uh, help that discontinuity. Uh, Big Mac, Denise, Elbert, Elbert uh, looks like we're going to stand vector. That is no good. So we a vector is a radar vector from the ATC, which we won't be doing. So there we go. We want to go to Ferris. Greet Roman one, two left. Looks good. So everybody seems to be happy there. And we will just simply step through it here on the screen. One nine right departure will be going direct. No, it will not be using the MCI. So no need to use the MCI. We'll just go directly to ANX uh, Alpha November X-ray. Yeah, I'll zoom out a little bit more so you can see here. And we'll step through it. So ANX VOR the Frank intersection to the CLU Columbia Missouri. VOR, Kayla intersection, Big Mac, Denise, Albert, Stan will fly out to Ferris, greet, and on to Roma 1 2 left in St. Louis. If we miss, have to go miss, we will follow that procedure and hold over the Troy VOR. So, looks good to me. Hit execute. Bam. She is going, she should turn pink actually, but I don't think it will until I fix our little takeoff issue here. Our V speeds were deleted, so they don't like that. There we go. We got we got it purple now. It was happy once we got that. So now with the V speeds calculator and all that good stuff, uh, it is happy with us. So our route looks good. We got a uh, we got our decelerator point, acceleration point, and all that good stuff. So. Let's head back over here to the map. I know this takes a while. I'm really trying to zoom through it, guys. Uh, you can always fast forward into the actual flight if you do not care about any of this. So <laughs> your choice, totally. Let's turn our TCAS on so we know where the other airplanes are in the air. Like so. And we have that set. So traffic, we're going to turn that on. You can see there are airplanes out there now and the airplane on the ground. Uh, we usually take that before we take the runway, but it's not that big of a deal. Let's uh, set our altitude in the MCP uh, for flight level 290, 29,000 feet. 29, 29, where you at? Where you at? Coming upon it. 6, 7, 28, 29. All right. Yeah, 29,000 feet. Looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and turn our flight directors on, which is these little guys are going to pop on here and over here as well and that's going to provide us uh, uh information on our pfd display primary flight display of uh, what we we're supposed to do with the airplane when we hand fly it so important with that auto throttle's not armed yet but we should be able to turn vietnam on uh but i'm not going to worry about that as of now uh, i believe you can just set it and it'll be white yeah no, we'll do that so everything looks good to me uh, we can go ahead and flip the anti-collision light on, which is our red beacon light outside to alert the ground crew that we are going to be moving this airplane soon enough. Uh, we will do a dual MC operation, so we will want our takeoff information over here on the right. Uh, so... No, 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 no. Next base, please. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Takeoff data. There we go. Take up data is up. Everybody looks happy. Trim is set. Uh, real quick. I'm not going to worry about doing radios because FSX does them automatically. In the real world, you would want to set all those up. I'm not in a big rush for that one, actually. Uh, one thing I do want to do real quick is set our data here for the pushback. Um, I want them to put, yeah, 131 is fine. They don't need to push us any, any. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, looks good. So we can just tell them to go ahead and start doing that. And uh, ground cockpit. Go ahead, Captain. Back to the FMC. 
We're all set to go up here. We've been cleared to push and start at your discretion. Roger that, ready for push. Power and air are clear, doors closed. We are ready for pushback. Please park and brake, please. We are indeed ready for pushback, so we will release the parking brake. Over to my first okay, officer. Have a look up here. Push. We need to turn our packs off so we can start these engines. So I turn those guys off. AP bleed. We want all that air sucking into these engines to start them. So first officer is going to go ahead and start the uh, number two engine first. And now we'll be watching the wings. Make sure. Oh, we got a plane back there. So we're going to have to wait and hold. It's a good thing we look, right? Because our ground crews are idiots. But I, you know, it's not really their fault, I suppose. Let's add that fuel to that airplane. Should have done it around 25 or so, but you get the idea. And it is ignited. You can hear that sucker roar. Uh, start valve still open, so it's still going. And once it closes, we can start the other engine. An airplane clear? I think he is. We'll check here in a minute, but uh, yeah, so that's closed. So now we can start engine one. Continue our push. Fucking vehicle. Scenery. <laughs> to add that fuel. There we go. Yeah, All right, brakes are set and uh, pressure's normal. All right, so we have two engines running now. So what do we do now? Well, pretty That's simple. We want the air to now come from that and not the APUs. We want to turn our packs on so our passengers have air AC. And then we'll flip over here to the captain's side. And we will just simply turn on the engine generators to set the APU. APU gen off us. We can shut off the APU. We don't need that anymore. What does the APU ask? It's an auxiliary power unit, which is a mini jet engine in the tail of the airplane. And I'll show you where it's at. Right here on the tail, you'll see a black, see that right there, that black right here. That's the APU outlet exhaust from it. So if you, had, if you wanted to know, that's what it is. Uh, okay. So now that we have the engine started, we're going to go ahead and set our flaps for five for our takeoff. And we're going to call up ground and tell them we're ready to move this airplane over to the runway one liner right. Uh, we don't need the Aiden new Aiden. We got it already. Uh, all right, yeah. Nine right, dude. All right. Taxi lights to come on. All righty. And. Looks like flaps are set indeed for five. Thank you for the first officer. We'll taxi this airplane over to the runway one nine right. This way, we can go out this way. The way I know, I'm not sure if that is supposed to be grass and stuff over there, and I don't want to run into that problem. So, we're just gonna do this. I come out this way. All right, so now we're rolling here. We can, uh, of course, make sure that all of our good, 
stuff is set. Minav auto throttles are going to be armed. We're going to set our auto throttles to 250 after we get back on some uh, some smoother pavement here. And we'll be back on smooth pavement. And we're going to be on mic. So let's go ahead and turn that to 250 knots. Why 250? Well, because below 10,000 feet, uh, the speed limit in the air is 250 knots. So we're just going to help the FMC along with that, even though it will determine all those speeds. But I mean, it will fly 250, not over 250 upon such things. I'll turn over this way. So I just got a nice idle position on the throttles. We got a nice uh, taxi out. I'll let you guys see the side view. All right, we're gonna test the open the speed brakes. Make sure that they're working, and we also test all of our flight controls, which are good. And as you can see, whenever I did that, the speed brakes, there is the little light right there. We want to test to make sure that that's good. And then fully forward. You don't want speed brakes on uh, takeoff. Uh, auto brakes, RTO, RTO for rejected takeoff. In case we have a rejected takeoff, we will, uh, the airplane will automatically brake and we will apply reverse thrust. Uh, when we get to V1, we will make our final decision on s a said speed. Or, not the speed, but the decision. If we're going to take the airplane to the air or not. So pretty much the airplane is ready for, for flight. I'm going to go ahead and alert the uh, flight crew that we are going to be ready for takeoff. Yaw it, Amber. We want to make sure that that sucker is on. Which I do want to definitely double check that. Okay, I'll turn the odd amper on for this flight. That might be nice to have. There's the UPS airplanes off on the right. And if you were a passenger on the flight, you would see them as such. Got an Airbus uh, A306, A300, and a Boeing 757. Can we down here is the, on our right over there is the uh, general aviation ramp, one of the, uh, which actually is, I believe now is the integrated airline services ramp over there. Let's get back on our line here. That uh, Capital Cargo 727 might look familiar. That's an airplane I used to work with, but uh, they parked all the 72s and now we have a 767 operation. We're going to be on the north side of a impeding snowstorm that is off to our west. I looked at the uh, weather before we fly, of course. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to come in tomorrow. Um, tomorrow evening and move and snow basically in the Missouri uh, all day Sunday. So that's why the skies look a little gloomy because we are flying real world weather and real world time. So the route is pretty much the same. Uh, 1540, which I believe is 940 UTC time. So yeah, it's 940 in the morning. 
as it is in real life here. So we are doing real world time and real world weather. Let's check and make sure an airplane's not coming down. Nope, we're clear. We seem to be clear. Let's go ahead and call up tower, let them know we're gonna be ready to go. They'll probably enjoy that information. Take off. That's what we like to hear. There for take off. Landing lights on. Uh, we want to go with strobe lights. And we'll go ahead and start our clock. I guess it's working now. We'll pull out onto the runway. And I know you want to see from the outside view, so. Oh, here she is. Come on. Here we are, taxiing out onto the runway. So what we say here is. Clear for takeoff runway 19 right, Southwest 961 RNAV 2. Alpha November X-ray. Actually, we're going to be doing that. We're not r -naving. So, let's go ahead and uh, apply our thrust. Let these engines stabilize, and we'll engage takeoff go-around mode. Which is actually a button on the side here. But uh, we're going to... There's a little cheat switch there. So, engines are stabilized. And takeoff thrust set. So, we just hold the airplane on the center line. And uh, we're gonna be a sterile cockpit from here for a little bit. So we get everything working the way it should be. 80 knots, cross check. Positive rate, here up. There's Kansas City. Bye bye. Making our turn towards Alpha November X ray. Then we'll be calling up the flaps there. Flaps one. Right there. See you next time. All right, flaps one, still good. Bring that nose down a little bit, and uh, we'll engage VNAV. So we'll be handling our speeds. I'm still flying the airplane laterally right now. and bring those retracts in. Flaps up. Flaps up. And auto brakes off. Flaps up, lights out. We would normally do a after takeoff checklist here, but uh, I don't have the flow out. We're just a very la relaxed flight today. L navigation is on. So now we can relax a little bit and uh, just clean up the airplane, which everything seems to be in the green. Everything seems to be good. Uh, we'll check over the first officer side, make sure we have everything set. APU bleed off. Engines one and two bleeds are on. Packs are on, so we won't have any horns going crazy on us. <laughs> uh, everything else looks good. 
No wing light, we don't need it right now, but uh, no logo light. It's, it's during the day. So. There's downtown Kansas City. Traffic, traffic. Where at? Where at? Where at? Where at? Okay, he's right here. We got him uh, 700 feet off our nose. He's just right above us. I don't see him though. He must be small little guy. Uh, he's coming right at us. Lost 500 now. Oh, they got him in sight right there. So I'll take a Gulfstream 4. Yeah, he's not a factor. We didn't have a TA, so. There he goes. That's what tra That's what the uh, ATIS is. Or the ATIS. <laughs> that's what TCAS is for. Traffic advisory. It's traffic collision avoidance system. These airplanes are way up there in the air, so, yeah. So, yeah, we're uh, doing a full flight with FMC and real world procedures, so I'm not using the default FSX ATC. I'm just uh, going to be using TCAS to get around the traffic. Uh, and actually I'll call up uh, Kansas City Center for flight following. They'll give us traffic advisories and they'll talk to us so we're not alone. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, flight is relatively, I mean, we haven't hit any turbulence yet. We've been, it's been pretty nice and smooth. So can't complain there. We're at 13,000 feet, so I'm, I was too busy talking. Landing lights are off. Taxi lights are off. We're about 10,000. Approved for electronics. I was looking at some traffic. They're way up there. We're almost to Alpha November X, right? You can see we're coming up on it there. And we're at 15,000 feet. Once we cross 18,000 feet, we will roll our altimeter back over. Which, uh, 2991 is what it was when we started. It's pretty much standard pressure. Pretty much a standard, uh, perfect, perfect day. I mean, the METAR doesn't get better than that. We're now we're in a turn. We're over ANX. And now we are flying, going to be flying direct to Frank Intersection. But you can see somebody else is using the ANX VOR. They just flew right over the top of it. All right, so we're at 2991 is uh, standard pressure. We're above 18,000 feet. So that's what that was uh, asking us. All righty, so we're at 21,900 feet. That was cool. We just had a plane go whizzing right by us over there. Uh, they're pretty busy today, it looks like. We can zoom in over there. There we went. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back over what we're doing. We got a plane pretty much flying the exact same airway we're on. Right up there and ahead of us. That's what we're seeing here. It's on the exact same uh, route as we are. And just much higher than this. Alrighty, so the chime just went off, and uh, that's also we had 1,000 to go till our top of climb, which is right here. TC, top of climb. 
I'm gonna pop that out for you so you can see it as we arrive onto it there. So the airplane's gonna start slowing down. We're gonna be at our cruise altitude of 290. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the chime, let them know the seatbelt can be. Seatbelts are turned off. And now we're at cruise. So we're only gonna be at a cruise for a short little time. We're almost at the Frank intersection. Once we get the Frank, you can see we come. We're gonna make a right, and then we'll be at our top of descent already on top of pretty much COU. If we have an airplane out there, that's where he's at. No big deal. He's probably gonna blow our doors off the whole flight. Now we're turning towards the COU VOR. Alrighty, everybody, we're almost to our top of climb, or top of descent. <laughs> already did that. So our top of descent is going to be on top of uh, COU. And I can tell you right now, it will be a heavy flight coming into St. Louis. So we will be, I'm well, not necessarily heavy, but uh, we will be using speed brakes all the way down as we shoot the Kayla 1 arrival. And I'll explain that as we come down. MCP altitude going to have to be reset. Uh, the FMC will bitch at me if I don't do it, so I'm going to go ahead and do it now. And I'm just going to go ahead and be lazy and tell it 2,100 for the ILS altitude. Normally you could set it down like 10,000 feet or whatever ATC instructs you and hit the altitude intervene button to where it will do that. Which is a great feature because if you're dealing with a real air traffic controller, he would tell you to descend to this or descend to this and you wouldn't want the FMC to be doing something different than what they're telling you to do because what they tell you to do is more important. All right. We're almost to our top of descent. And uh, we are going to... Oh, that one airplane's over there now on our left side. Okay, we, we did end up catching them. So... Over here on the uh, first officer side, we're just going to get this airplane set up for the uh, ILS. We're going to be using uh, flaps 30 for landing, 137 knots. So we're going to go ahead and select that. There it is. Boom. Flap speed is selected. So we have a VRF speed now. Uh, ILS is going to be 108.9er. So we'll put that over here. 108.9er. And uh, we'll go ahead and activate it. Why not? There we go. It's active. And uh, looks like we got 122 on the course. So the courses need to be set to 122. And the airplane has begun our descent into St. Louis, initial descent. So we'll let the flight attendants know. Which we just did there. So now we can uh, set what was a one two two on our course heading. One two two is set. So now we're not descent. We're not at a decel point yet, but we're getting closer in our descent into St. Louis. All right, so we're almost to the K lane intersection. All right, so we need to reset our altimeter back to barometric pressure in the area, which is 29901, hasn't changed. We got a nice view of the Missouri River ahead of us right now. Alright, so we're descending below our little buddy up there. 
as we make our initial approach into St. Louis. Drag is not required in this flight so far, so I'm actually quite surprised. Usually they'll tell you we have to uh, pull the speed brakes out, but so far the airplane's been doing a good job of managing speed. But we're at 331 knots. We're going to have to hit this decel point up there. Well, we're going to hit the first one for 10, so we don't exceed 10,000 feet. Or 10,000 feet. We don't exceed 250 knots under 10,000 feet. And the airplane's already starting to slow down. For such. Our airplane's doing a great job of managing speed without uh, the use of air brakes, so we'll be returning uh, now to the Kayla in this section. Like we just crossed over and heading on to Big Mac. So as you can see, the airplane's not going to exceed 250 knots below 10,000 feet, so it's doing a great job of slowing down as need to be. And at 10,000 feet, we'll turn our landing lights on and let our crew know another time that we're passing through 10,000 feet and that portable electronics need to be stowed, which is bullshit. It doesn't do anything to these airplanes. Are you kidding me? Bullshit. I think the Mythbusters did a great job on that one. Proving everybody that they're nuts. Okay, now we head on to Denise is our next... Is it, oh, sorry. No, now we're going to Big Mac. We cross over Kayla. I don't know. I was right. Okay, yeah. We're headed to Denise. Airplane's making some adjustments here. Who's that guy up there? I don't know what he was. So we're below 10,000 feet. Let's go ahead and flip our landing lights on. Now yeah, we'll flip the runway turn off and taxi light on. Uh, wing light. Why not? More visible. And doing this, we will flip our is over to continuous flight in case we encounter a bird strike, which we won't because FSX does not have bird strikes. But in real life, you would put them on continuous so the engines have a shot at restarting, actually. All right, so we're almost we're headed to Stan intersection. After Stan, we're going to be hitting our decel. Our deceleration point uh, is where we want the, the airplane is going to start slowing down to flaps up speed, which is about 210 knots there. So once it gets to about there, then uh, we can start adding flaps one. And we'll be at flaps one, the airplane will slow down to flaps one speed, and so on and so forth. So we get this airplane slowed down. The airplane's slowing down to 200 knots. So we're going to be slowed down well before our deceleration point. Did you hear it? It's starting to add it in now. We see Lambert Field off at our uh, 12 o'clock right now, about 1 o'clock right over there. And uh, Square to St. Louis Airport is right over there on our right. So we're below 100 knots. We can go ahead and pull our retractables down. I want to make sure. I just want to rip them off. Almost to the D-cell. If we hit the D-cell, we'll go flaps one. Well, once the airplane starts slowing down for that, at least. So far, we've been in the air for 31 minutes. It's not too bad. Remember, 41 minute flight is what this is. So anything over that, we're going to be late. And now we'll select auto brakes one for our approach to be the airplane will automatically break to assist us. We'll use the reverse thrust as well. So we're 20 miles to the runway. 20.2 on DME, counting down, 19.9. So we hit our decel point, airplane is slowing down to flaps up speed as you can see there. 
We sped up a little bit, now we're slowing back down. Which is perfectly normal. All right, are we getting closer? There's our flaps one speed. So we'll put our flaps one in. Oh, let's talk to Lambert. Where are you at, Lambert? Four. Let's see what they're doing over there. No, we want a different runway. One, two left. I told you they were going to do that to me. Flaps five. Two million runway one two left. So everything looks good. We are slowing the airplane down. Almost to be rough speed. And we're going to be doing an R now. The ILS from my one two left. We'll line up on her now. Line up on her now. So now I'll turn off LNAV. I have the uh, airplane. We'll just keep using the VR speed for now. If we get a little closer. Then I will uh, be doing a manual landing in this airplane today because. Yeah, we're doing a visual approach. There's a 17810. Five, five. Let's go ahead and go gear down. up the glide slope and once we do then I will have it from there. Auto throttles are off. A little windy. But we're fine. Autopilot is engaged. I have control of the airplane now. Oh, shut up. Flaps 30 for landing. Auto brakes arm. Be breaking them. Marker. 
Ferrata. Brakes open. Reverse thrust. Like the high speed. Out of brakes off. This happened to disengage as well. At 60 knots. Up the ground, we'll see you next time, Southwest 2906. So, speed brakes in. Alrighty, they have us coming in straight in on Juliet. And we'll be to the. Uh, what is the game for you now? And yeah, I know the uh, speed brakes don't show up on the. For some reason they don't show up on the replay, so sorry about that. But I did have them engaged and I did have them open during the landing. So flaps up. Slow this puppy down. Flaps are up. And we need to start the APU. APU start. There we have it. There's the ramp I work at right there on the left. The Julia pad. Alright, we'll be getting a uh, gate soon enough. That. They just might appreciate it. <laughs> Alrighty, and uh, we'll go ahead and shut the engines down here. So let's make sure everything's ready to go here. Uh, APU is on bus, and APU bleed is on. Yeah, I'm gonna shut the engines off. Fuels are all like uh, yep, fuel selectors are all as well. And let's do some overhead checks. That all looks good. Let's take collision light off. Now we turn those back to off. That back to both. Or left to right, it don't matter. Uh, yep, so. So there you have it, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed the flight today to St. Louis. And uh, we'll leave you with the uh, an amazing shot of the outside of the airplane. And uh, we'll see you on a future flight. <laughs>